Right. This is how we use Skyrim mods with Steam Workshop. First of all, you've got to go to the Workshop. That means you go to the Community tab in Steam. Then you click on Workshop. From here, you'll get all the games Steam Workshop supports. We're interested in Skyrim, so we'll go to Skyrim. Now, we need to pick some kind of mod here which you want to download. Something that you might find interesting. So, I'm just going to go to... Um, let's have a look. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Kunja Mini Dragon. We'll click on that. Now, I haven't tried this mod. I've got no idea about it. It might be really crap or it might be excellent. I've got no idea. Just going to use it as an example. Now, if I want to install this mod, what I do is I click on subscribe. That's it. I've done. That's how you get the mod. Now, we go back to the library. and We click on the Elder Scrolls here. This will load up the, um, the, well, the splash screen. When you see the splash screen appear, that's when Steam Workshop starts sending the mods you subscribe to down to your computer. If you get an error at this point, it means there's something wrong with the Steam service and it's failed to get the mods you've subscribed to. You just quit out and redo it again. But if you go to Data Files, you'll be able to see when it's finished downloading because it'll appear on this list. Now, once it appears, it's ready to use. It'll appear with a tick next to it as well, by the way. The tick means that the mod is installed and working. When you subscribe to anything on Steam Workshop, it adds a tick to it, so it's automatically there and working. Whereas the empty boxes are things that you untick yourself. Now, I can't remember what, exactly what the name's going to appear as on here, because sometimes the mod names don't match the names in Steam Workshop. But once it appears, once your mod you've chosen appears, you can be able to see it listed. Kunja Mini Dragon, there you go, it's done, right at the bottom. So now we can OK that, and we can play the, play the mod, or play the game with the mod. Nice and simple. All we have to do is leave this screen up and let it go, or let it run through. Now I'll show you something else. This is a bit more technical. Right. <clears throat> Now we're going to talk about the mods that actually get installed, or the files that actually get installed. If you want to uninstall a mod, you unsubscribe. You just click on the same button used to subscribe, to unsubscribe. Then you go to the um, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, Data Folder, find the mod, you look for the ESP and the BSA, and you just select it and press Delete, and that's it, the mod's gone. Now, one of the good things about this, this Steam Workshop system is, each mod packs its own files and its own BSA. So if two mods edited a special Giles hat, then deleting one BSA would not delete the Giles hat from the other because the other mod would also contain the Giles hat. So, you know, both mods would have to entirely self-contained. They couldn't affect the other by deleting one and leaving the other without the hat. Now, you also, with the Steam Workshop system, if I was to press, say, uh, Untick divine, divine Intervention there. I'd disable that mod. Because it's a BSA, it's interesting, because it's a BSA file and not loose files, unticking it means the BSA and the ESP are completely unloaded. They're not, not used at all. They just it, it disable it completely from the game. But if you try to do that with loose files, you might disable the ESP, that file, but all the loose files that edit the default game content will still be very much active in your game. You can't disable a mod of loose files that way. You can only turn off the ESP. All the loose files will remain completely 100% active if they edit anything else in the game. So the only way to remove a loose file mod that you might download from other sites, not Steam Workshop, is to completely delete the files by going into each folder and finding all the bits and deleting all them a bit at a time. That's the only way you can do it. Now, my Helgen mod, which is down here somewhere, uses a fake version of Matt's uh, armor in order to support Matt's armor in the game. It's technical, but basically, by packing a fake version of his armor in mine, I can use, I can make his armor magically appear in my mod without ever editing his mod. 
So I'm kind of like abusing the system to create a feature. But it's a good example. This is what I want to show you. This file is my BSA file. You get that, you get that. Right? That's all you get. But on my system, I've got the original source files, which are up here. Now, if I had removed that dot back from the end, my source files would override my BSA file. I would get that and not the BSA file version of it. So I can't see what um, happens from my BSA file because my source files are used instead of the BSA. And that's another problem with those files. They always override the BSA. So if you were to download, say, a mod from one site as a loose file, so then you were to get the same mod from Nexus, and then the modder decided to update a load of the meshes and textures, because the loose files were on your system, the BSA file would be ignored. It wouldn't be updated, so you, you wouldn't get the updated version of the mod. This is why some people who use both the loose files from one site and the meshes and BSA, well, the BSA and ESPs from Steam Workshop run into trouble. So your best bet is to stick, if you can lose the loose files for a mod, stick to using the loose files version. If you're going to use the BSA version, stick to using the BSA version. Do not mix and match. It's a bad idea. Right, you see this failed to enumerate subscribe files. That means Steam's had an error. That's not my fault, it won't be your fault, that's Steam. Steam is having a brain fart. So if you see any errors while this screen is up, that's not you, that's Steam. Just ignore it and go back and try again later. Anyhow, that's it. Hopefully you found it educational. I'll see you in the next one.